Let's see, day five or six, depending on how you look at it, on the Pacific Northwest Tour, and a couple of tips on how to land your motorcycle safely when you need to pull off the side of the road to uh, grab one of those pictures or adjust your gear or whatever the case might be, okay? All that coming up right after this. Welcome back to Utah ADV. I'm Eric Young and I'm glad to have you back with me. It's been a little while since I posted, lasts about three weeks. Um, some things have transpired in between time. Uh, one, I took another trip out to Monterey, California. Uh, I finished uh, rebuilding the Tiger. I put uh, a new windscreen on there and got a new radiator in place. So I decided to bring that back out to Addie, to my daughter in Monterey, so she could ride that and enjoy that before she uh, deploys as, uh, as things go. So um, that was a nice trip to go out. We went uh, for a ride or two as well, her and her husband and I. Some things learned uh, along the way in and uh, as, as somewhat of a veteran rider, this, these things kind of uh, happen without even thinking about them anymore. But in riding with others who are kind of new, especially to a tall bike, um, there's some things to consider. So I wanted to kind of cover those very quickly with you uh, as far as, um, and especially on the Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 101, going up the coast of California, Oregon, and into Washington, where you're on a, a windy two-laner that has a drop-off on one side. There's some, some things that need to be thought about uh, when you decide to go through and pull over to take a picture. Now, the photographer in me is always arguing with the rider in me as far as what's a great spot to go through and take this shot is it safe can i pull over or is can i frame it up here is this what i want and there are a lot of times they're kind of in conflict uh, i'll see a great shot but i can't find the area or the, or the safe space to go through and pull off and grab the picture so that being said there's kind of a a, a rubric if you will kind of a, a this background process that runs in my brain as far as how to safely land my motorcycle, especially in two-way traffic where the lanes are narrow and there's not a whole lot of shoulder there. Um, the first off, obviously, is, uh, is safety. Can I safely leave the pavement and get off onto the side of the road with my motorcycle? And that takes into consideration, is the shoulder paved or is it gravel? If it's gravel, is it rutted? Uh, what kind of gravel am I looking at? Because all that comes into consideration when it comes time for me to leave that position as well. If, uh, if I happen to get into a, a corner where I don't have a line of sight as far as traffic coming, when I get back onto the road, that becomes a consideration as well. And the gravel becomes a consideration there too, because as I'm getting ready to mount back onto the highway and I'm feathering my clutch to get the speed that I need to get onto the road to get out of anybody's way, if I have a short distance of sight, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to work against me. So I want to make sure that I have those kinds of ideas in mind that I can get in and out pretty quickly. And especially if I'm traveling with somebody else, do they have the ability to get in and out of there quickly as well and safely? So the first idea is this idea of safety. Can I see both ways getting back onto the road? And does the road surface allow me um, a, a quick mounting onto the pavement as opposed to having to feather my clutch and be careful not to uh, spin my rear tire uh, in gravel or in, in dirty, uh, sandy type of area that way. The second thing I consider uh, is stability. Do I have the ability to, to land my bike? Uh, not only in terms of my kickstand and the, the bike's angle to the road, but also when I put my feet down, uh, are they being put down in places where they won't slip out in terms of gravel or sand or anything like that is concerned? Um, also, how level is that plane that I brought my motorcycle into, okay? Because if it's off one way or the other, my bike becomes a little bit more vulnerable to, to tipping, especially if I'm dealing with, uh, with semi-traffic. And that's not going to happen really on the PCH or the 101. But if I'm someplace else and I have semis blowing by, their wash is enough, and I know this by experience because it tipped over my KLR once, their wash is enough to go through and tip over a bike if it's not stable. So... 
Do I have a, a, an equal uh, pavement there? Is it level enough for me to go through and put the kickstand down and keep the bike upright enough to where I don't have to worry about its stability? If you have changed the geometry of your motorcycle, meaning if you've shortened the bike by putting some shorter dog bones on there, or somehow you've gone through and, and changed just the overall height of the bike, what a lot of people don't understand is they need to change the height of their kickstand as well, because now the bike will be even more upright, if not more vulnerable, because they've shortened the geometry of the two patch points, the front and rear tire, and then the kickstand's contact point as well. So make sure that all that stuff has been taken into consideration. The higher your bike is, if you've got a shorter inseam when you're constantly hunting for that safe place to put your foot, when you come into that landing area, that's one of the first things you need to consider as well, besides the safety of getting in and getting out, but the stability of the land that you're coming in on. Can I put my kickstand down? Will it go down safely? Am I, am I uphill or downhill? Do I have a slope? Do I need to leave it in gear in order to keep the bike in place? All these things kind of um, play into the, hopefully play into the back of your mind while you're looking for a safe place to land your motorcycle. Not a great idea to pull off into turnouts, into designated turnouts, because obviously you have other people who, you know, motorhomes, that kind of thing, who are turning out and getting out of traffic in order for faster traffic to go by. If you have to use a turnout, go to the very end of the turnout and stop there instead of anywhere in between, like the beginning or the middle of the turnout. So it still allows enough room for uh, RVs or slower vehicles to come in, get off the road, let the slower traffic go, and then for them to get back on, and then for your ability to get back on safely as well. So we left Bend in Oregon having uh, fixed the radiator, at least temporarily. And uh, for that day, we made it clear up into uh, Lincoln, Oregon, where we stopped at a KOA. Um, we caught a couple of uh, interviews, one in Bandon, which I'll, I'll put up here. And then the second one, after we got into the KOA, that we talked about the trip, and I'll put that up here as well. And not to be redundant necessarily, because both of those will go through and cover some of the highlights that we had along the trip. Um, I will talk about Umqua, uh, the Umqua River area of, uh, of Oregon. Oh, first off, we, we stopped in Florence and had a great lunch there. And even though the town was pretty well... Um, and not locked down, but uh, very careful as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Uh, we were able to get in uh, early for lunch, had the only table in the restaurant, and uh, enjoyed ourselves. I love Florence. It's a great little town, great little place to go through and kind of stretch your legs and take a walk and, and see what's going on in that part of Oregon. From Florence, then we went on up and uh, we, went to, we went to the Umpqua uh, Lighthouse. There's, some, there's a beautiful ride through there, a beautiful lake uh, area through that way as well that made for some great photo ops. And from there, we went up along the coastline to Haseda, and I hope I'm saying that right, uh, where there's this wonderful lighthouse on the side of... Um, uh, of, a, of a hill that uh, overlooks the ocean. We couldn't really get to it there uh, because of the amount of people, uh, but there's a beautiful cove there as well. Anyway, we made our way into uh, Lincoln and uh, spent our night there at a KOA, met some great people. Uh, had a wonderful chance to sit down and chat with a uh, father and son team as well who were making their ride the other direction and uh, talked a little bit about uh, you know what it takes to go through and ride this thing on a motorcycle. So that's it for this episode. Uh, on the next episode we'll get into, let's see, we'll go from Lincoln to uh, Saltwater Park just uh, by Tacoma on the Puget Sound. And, uh, that was a night train member, I'll tell you that. So thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like it, give me that thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. And if you've yet to subscribe, please do so. And I'm sure I appreciate having you along for the ride. Um, as I look forward into future episodes after we talk about the Pacific Northwest Tour, um, there's so much here in Utah to talk about and so many more rides to engage on. Um, and I hope you'll join me to go through and discover some of the most incredible roads uh, west of the Mississippi here in the great state of Utah. All right. So from the shores of the Great Salt Lake, um, I'm hoping you uh, keep that shiny side up. All right. All the gear all the time. Have a safe ride and we'll see you on the next show.